think of a dam being built on a river. It seems easy in the modern world of technology. Now complicate the situation and make the river the highest river in the world. Now it seems not only difficult but nearly impossible. But not for China. China's Yarlung Tangpo River reaches heights of nearly 5,000 meters above sea level, making it the highest river in the world as it snakes its way through the Himalayan mountain range. In today's video, we will thoroughly explain all the details about building the Yarlung Zhangbo River Dam that has once again made China on top of the world. But before diving into the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for more content like this. Without further ado, let's get started. China intends to construct the largest hydroelectric dam in the world in the Himalayan foothills, where the first Tibetan Empire was founded by the prehistoric Yarlung civilization. Chinese state-owned media revealed plans for a 60-gigawatt megadam on the Yarlung Tangpo River in the Tibetan Autonomous Region in November of last year. But why does China put more effort into hydropower projects? Beijing has increased its efforts on its hydroelectric projects in Tibet to be carbon neutral by 2060, despite the condemnation of the dams from Tibetan rights organizations and environmentalists. Although Tenzin Dolmi has never visited the Tibetan plateau, she was raised hearing tales of the vast rivers and mountains that make up her ancestral home. Dolmi, raised among Tibetan exiles in India and now teaches Tibetan language and culture in Melbourne, Australia's second largest city noted that respect for nature runs deep in Tibetan society. Because there are river gods in the water, we were warned not to use the rivers as restrooms when swimming in them. Ever wondered why only the Yarlung Tangpo was the first choice for the project? Given that it represents the goddess Dorji Pogmo, one of the highest incarnations in Tibetan tradition, the Yarlung Tangpo is significant in particular. According to Tempa Gelten Zamla, Director of Environment and Development at the Tibetan Policy Institute, this respect for nature was fostered by the Tibetan Plateau's distinctive topography over many years. However, Zamla asserts that since Communist Party or CCP-run China invaded Tibet in 1950, Tibetans do not influence what occurs on their territory. We had no dams before Chinese colonization, not because we couldn't harness it, but because we had enormous respect for the nature of the rivers. According to a rigid tradition, no one is allowed to approach some streams or engage in activities that can disturb them. You don't even need laws because everyone in Tibet follows them. Because Tibetans are not consulted, it's highly frustrating that the Chinese will do anything to further their economic development. But why has China invested in a project based on the world's highest peak river? The Yarlung Tangpo is the highest river in the world, rising from its source in the glaciers of western Tibet to over 5,000 meters above sea level as it winds through the Himalayan mountain range. The Yarlung Tangpo Grand Canyon is formed as the river plunges 2,700 meters through it creating a gorge that is more than twice as deep as the Grand Canyon in the United States. Although experts have cautioned that the world record dam will probably have political and environmental repercussions, the abrupt fall makes it particularly conducive to generating hydroelectric power. The mega dams were built mainly, according to Yan Jiang, head of the Power Construction Corporation of China, to lead China's transition to a greener economy. Although China already has an abundance of energy, Brian Ayler, director of the Southeast Asia program at the Stimson Center and an expert on rivers, predicts that the power generated will likely be utilized to compensate for losses, as China transitions from non-renewable energy sources to cleaner ones. The Three Gorges Dam, now China's largest dam in a project that required the eviction of more than 1.4 million people, could be replaced by the Mega Dam, which could generate up to three times as much hydroelectric power. Is that all there is? Compared to the Yangtze River, the lands around the Yarlung Tangpo are less populated. However, there is precedent for relocating locals to make space for dam projects on the Yarlung Tangpo. According to local media, almost 2,000 people were relocated in 2015 to make way for the Yangon Hydro Power Station. According to the government-backed Global Times newspaper, the Yarlung Tangpo Dam will be erected in Midog County which has a population of 14,000 people. Is there any geopolitical significance for the same? The Tibetan Plateau, which is 8.2 million square miles in size and borders several other countries, is abundant in natural resources. 
An estimated 1.8 billion people in nations like China, India, and Bhutan depend on the freshwater runoff from melting glaciers and mountain springs that flows through the Himalayan watershed. They are along Tangpo and Mekong rivers, according to Zamla, were essential factors in the CCP's decision to seize control of Tibet more than 70 years ago. Following an incident between India and China in the western Himalayas that resulted in the deaths of 20 Indian troops and an undetermined number of Chinese soldiers last year, those geopolitical issues came into sharp relief. Last month, it came to light that soldiers had gotten into another fight over their shared border. What's the connection between Bangladesh and India to this beautiful river? Which originates in China, flows into Bangladesh as well as the Indian states of Arunachal Pradesh and Assam, where it is known as the Brahmaputra. Zamla predicts that the CCP will certainly try to utilize it as a political tool, given that the projected Magadam is only 30 kilometers from the Indian border. The ministry regulating India's water resources said it would respond with a 10 gigawatt project on a different Brahmaputra tributary. The United States has attempted to push the two parties into resource sharing after sensing the potential for conflict. In the recently passed Tibet Policy and Support Act, Congress vowed to promote a regional framework on water security to facilitate cooperative agreements among all riparian states on the Tibetan Plateau. Similarly, although Bangladesh, India, and China are not parties, the International Water Courses Convention, ratified by the UN in 1997, applies certain rights and obligations concerning transboundary flows. China has made an effort to assuage these worries. A spokesperson for the Chinese Foreign Ministry Hua Chunying said in a statement in December, China will continue to maintain dialogue with India and Bangladesh through current channels. The outside world doesn't need to oversimplify it. So, what are the repercussions of this nearly impossible project if it falls into the Mekong project? While there are other dam projects along the river, the one in the Yarlong Tangpo Grand Canyon will undoubtedly be the greatest. According to Ayler of the Stimson Center, several small and medium-sized dams have already been constructed. He is concerned that the Yarlong Tangpo could open the door for introducing similar projects because he is an expert on the Mekong River. Recent statistics on Chinese dams had been examined, and it was discovered, he claimed, that these activities have given deeper and deeper cuts to the downstream communities of the once mighty Mekong River. He points out that China's 11 Mekong dams have interfered with fish life and the flow of silt, and directly caused the collapse of riverbanks and the devastation of towns due to the zero coordination for running dams. Ayler claims there are significant concerns even though the details of China's development plans for the Yarlong Tangpo are still unclear. Rivers are known to be ravenous, according to Ayler. So, if you remove that silt, the river will become insatiably curious and begin to undermine the banks of the deltas as it searches for new materials. It's a natural process that was triggered by an abnormal event. The Grand Canyon of the Yarlong Tangpo will be irreversibly transformed if the Yarlong Tangpo is dammed. Tenzin Dolmi continues to hold onto the dream of seeing Tibet one day. However, after spending 34 years away from her native country, Dolmi has learned to set reasonable goals for herself. She said, I've always had this image of the lovely capital of Lhasa but I'm aware that it won't even come close to my dreams. What if not only China, but another significant country also gets involved in the project? Other countries besides China are also interested in damming the river. Large-scale hydropower plants along the Yarlong Tangpo and its tributaries have also been proposed by India. Up to 160 enormous dams along its route are included in public and private proposals and they should be able to generate about 57 gigawatts of power in the nation's northeast. The Chinese dams could theoretically produce up to three times the power of the Three Gorges Dam due to their location and the project's projected scale. Project proposals have existed since the 1990s when the government studied the river's potential for hydropower production. In contrast to the Three Gorges Dam, which necessitated the relocation of over 1.4 million people, the Yarlong Tangpo region is comparatively unpopulated. Therefore, the human cost of the projected dam should be significantly lower. But it's vital to remember that the river has other dams as well, in addition to the new one. There are currently several minor to medium-sized dams in place. So what exactly are the potential costs of this magnum opus? 
This is a costly endeavor, not only in terms of building costs but also because dams, particularly those of this size, can have adverse effects on nearby ecosystems and populations that are hard to mitigate. It's one of the most important ecosystems on the planet, and the source of many significant rivers is the Tibetan Plateau. In terms of geology, the Yarlung Tangpo Gorge is still a relatively young and active formation. As a result, the region is subject to numerous geological pressures, seismic activity, and frequent landslides. An 8.0 magnitude earthquake that struck the region in the 1950s triggered numerous landslides, which led to downstream floods in some areas. Due to another significant landslide, a 4 billion cubic meter lake barrier was created in Yiyang in early 2000. The barrier fell shortly after, causing floods that harmed millions of people. The Himalayan glaciers and snow lines have been melting at an alarming rate as average temperatures have risen. Many rivers like the Yarlung Tangpo, which draws its water from the mountain range, depend on these glaciers as their primary source of fresh water. If the dams are built, the gorge environment may also suffer. The locals use slash and burn farming techniques to develop farmland even though the trees along the gorge are deemed overmature, accelerating soil erosion. As a result, the local species are rapidly becoming endangered and at risk of extinction. Undoubtedly, the additional strain of a sizable dam will be too much for these delicate ecosystems. The area in question is also quite significant from a geological perspective. The 2.5 million square kilometers Tibetan Plateau is bordered by numerous countries and is rich in resources. Nearly 2 billion people receive their drinking water from the Himalayan watershed. Any disturbance in this area could have dire repercussions for individuals who depend on this water for survival. Phew! China again is stamping its name in golden letters with such projects in hand. But what do you think? Will it elevate and boost the reputation of China or create a tiff between neighboring countries? Is the project good enough to appreciate? Tell us in the comments section. And if you like our content, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more. Thanks for watching.